Hi, this is room 7609, and this is the Late Bar, and we are open because tonight we're going to be celebrating 40 years of Duran Duran. This month, June, is the 40th anniversary of the release of their debut album, their self-titled album. And uh, in October, October 22nd, they are releasing their 15th studio album called Future Past. So today I thought it would be a great idea to count down my favorite Duran Duran albums. They might be different from yours, but let me know in the comments what are your favorite Duran Duran albums and how do they stack up. So this is it. Let's go. So I got my headband, I got my wristband. Here we go, let's count down my top 15 albums of Duran Duran. Now before we start, I just want to say I'm not going to include greatest hits albums or live albums like Arena, which is a great album, just the studio albums. And I'm going to be counting down 15, but if some of you calculate, you're going to say, but their 15th studio album is not re released. And no, I have not heard it, so I'm not counting that album. It's not coming out till October. However, you'll see when we get to a certain number why I've included 15 albums. So let's start off at number 15. And number 15 is an album I don't really go back to very often. Actually, the, the bottom five albums are not albums I listen to too much. I did go back to them recently. And um, I know some people like this album, but there's got to be an album at the bottom. So I have chosen Liberty. Now, Liberty came at a time in 1990 when the group was sort of at their low. Uh, they had lost, obviously, Andy Taylor and Roger Taylor at that point. They brought in Warren Cucurello, who um, was the became the guitarist, I believe, an official member of Duran Duran. And this album has two great singles. It has The Violence of Summer, which I like, and Serious, which is actually a huge fan favorite uh, for Duran Duran fans. But... Two songs don't quite make an album. There's some songs on here that I can't really listen to. And probably a, a lot of these songs would, would actually contend for some of my least favorite Duran Duran albums. Songs like, like Hothead and uh, a few others. Uh, not my favorite, but um, a few good tracks to, to, to check out. And that's it, Liberty at number 15. At number 14 um, is an album. Actually, it's the one album I actually don't physically own. It is the cover album, Thank You. Now, I might be a bit biased because I'm not really a fan of cover albums. And I don't think this album put Duran Duran in their best light. However, they still had uh, John Taylor, who was still part of the group. Uh, the single that they play a lot, uh, White Lines, they often play at all their shows. I re-listened to the album recently and not quite my favorite. I don't know quite where they were going with this. Not quite my style. And so that's it. And number 14 is Thank You. And number 15 is kind of an odd album. Um, at one point, Duran Duran only consisted of two original members, and that was Nick Rhodes and Simon LeBon. Plus, they had Warren that was part of it. They did two albums. And in the year 2000, 2001, they did an album called Pop Trash. Now, a lot of people, this is a long forgotten album. I don't even remember when this album officially came out. But um, some people do like it. It is actually not a bad album. I was revisiting it. And um, it actually has some cool tracks on there. Uh, there's a Pop Trash movie, which I really like. There's a song that sounds sort of very Beatlesque, And uh, the, the first single as well, which the name escapes me, Somebody Else, Not Me. Um, and it's actually a cool album. It's a nice album to listen to if you just want to kind of vibe and you're not really into sort of, you know, dancing or going out and stuff like that. I think it makes actually a great, I think it would make a great soundtrack album or like a TV show album. So kind of a cool, mellow album. I don't love the production on it. I think it's a little bit muddy, but um, that's the album that I've chosen at number 13, is Pop Trash. Now we're going to move into a little bit of a later period. Well, actually, not too much later. I think about seven years later. And uh, Duran Duran, uh, this uh, had reformed a few years before this uh, with their album Astronaut, which is coming up later in my countdown. But um, after Astronaut, they were going to continue together with the five original members. But uh, Andy Taylor, their guitarist, didn't like the direction they were going. And the direction they were going was kind of to do sort of a modern album with Timbaland. And that is Red Carpet Massacre. And here's the actual cover. Actually, I like the graphics on this album. It's kind of nice. Um, this album divided Duran Duran fans. There's actually quite a few good songs on here. My favorite track on here is Box Full of Honey. I think it's quite good. Skin Divers is interested, Zooming In, 
Night Runner, which was supposed to be the lead single. Uh, the lead single ended up being Falling Down, which I think is quite nice. The thing with Timbaland, though, is Duran Duran works often with, sometimes they work on their own, sometimes they work with different producers like Nile Rodgers and, and a few others. But when Timbaland works with an artist, the album kind of becomes his album, his sound kind of takes over. And I think that's one of the reasons why it doesn't rate so high in the sort of Duran Duran fan era. But this is it, uh, Red Carpet Massacre. Um, I think it's actually an okay album. I think it's kind of cool. They wanted to do something different. And that's what I love about Duran Duran is I don't mind when they stray a little bit. I, I like it when they take chances. I think this album sort of took away their, their, their sort of like common sound, but I think it's still kind of cool, has some cool tracks on it. So that's it for number uh, 12, actually, and that is Red Carpet Massacre. Now, as we move on to number 11, we're going to come back to the uh, what I would call a sister album to Pop Trash. And the album they released in 1997 with the same members. They had Nick, they had Simon, they had Warren. Uh, the first album they did was Medazzaland. Now, both this album and Pop Trash was done at a time when I believe Simon was having some writer's block. And uh, Nick and Warren did a lot of the music. Nick did a lot of the lyrics. This is probably the better of the two albums. It started off with a super strong single, um, Electric Barbarella, which I absolutely love. Uh, so some great songs. There's some other sort of like cool tracks on here. Big Bang Generation, um, Out of Mind, Who Do You Think You Are. Um, if this was on vinyl, which I don't think it ever was on vinyl, Side A would be great. Side 2, the B-side, kind of waning a little bit. But it's a cool album to take a listen to. Um, and that's it, Medazzaland. And actually the, uh, the title track is actually one of the few songs that Simon doesn't sort of sing or talk on, it's actually Nick Rhodes that does most of the uh, sort of singing, talking, sort of rapping on it. Interesting album to go check out at number 11. Number 10, probably people are going to think this album is a little bit low on my list. Um, this next album is just titled Duran Duran, just like their debut album. They did not give it a name. Most fans call it the wedding album because on the cover, um, all the uh, the members have put pictures of their parents uh, wedding over here. So this is it. This was actually an important album for Duran Duran in 1993 because after Liberty, they were kind of at a low. They didn't really have any charting singles. And this put them right on the back of the charts. This turned them into a band that wasn't just an 80s band. Uh, it was the 90s. They had the huge hit Ordinary World, which went all the way up to number two on the Billboard Hot 100. They had another top 10 come undone. I think it went to number seven or number eight. And this brought them back into the prominence. Um, it, it, it made them a band that, that, that just wasn't of an era. And I think they got a lot of new fans on this. It's a cool album. I don't love the sort of the, the, the sound or the direction they were going with this. Too Much Generation's kind of okay. I was re-listening to it recently and I actually like it more than when it came out, but super important album. I think without this album, I'm not sure if they would have sort of continued in the vein. They might have, but that might have been the end of Duran Duran, who knows. But a very cool album if you want to check them out and want to hear something more than just sort of the hits of the, in their heyday. I would check it out, The Wedding Album, which is that. Number nine. Now we move on to a few more modern albums. These next three albums are what I call, I don't know, I like to call them like a trio of albums of modern albums for Duran Duran. And I think these albums actually prove that Duran Duran were not just a flash in the pan. They weren't just a group of their time. That they could produce great albums, you know, I don't know, 20, 30 years in, into their career. Um, I know this album has fans a little bit divided. There's not a huge lot of fans of this album, but I absolutely love. This was the last album they released in 2015 called Paper Gods. I went to this tour. I went to uh, the uh, Puyallup, uh, Washington uh, sort of state fair. Saw them with Nile Rodgers. Absolutely incredible to see them play with Nile Rodgers. He produced the, uh, the first single... Um, um, I'm going to forget all the titles. Uh, Pressure Off with uh, Janelle Monet. Uh, this is a great album. I don't know why some fans don't like it. Uh, you Kill Me With Silence to me is one of the best songs I've ever done. It kind of sounds like The Chauffeur Part 2. Last Night in the City is Super Dance. Not quite sort of the sound that they do. I absolutely love that. Face for Today. What Are the Chances? I don't know. This is excellent. I love the production on this album. Everything is clear. Unlike Pop Trash, it's beautifully produced. 
I don't know. I think it's a super album. I don't know why more fans don't like it, but you know, everybody has their favorite. Not everybody can like the same album. So that's it. Paper Gods coming in at number nine. Then we move to an album which I believe is super liked. I've seen this album almost at number two on, on a few lists online. And this is the album they did in, I guess, about 10 years ago, 2010. It's the album they did with Mark Ronson called All You Need Is Now. And what Mark wanted to do is he wanted to do kind of a, a follow-up to Real. I mean, there was a follow-up. It's called Seven and the Ragged Tiger. But he wanted to keep kind of that same sound and produce an album. This is absolutely excellent. Blame It On The Machines. Um, some of the other songs that, that I love. Safe In The Heat Of The, uh, the Moment with Animatronic. Um, leave a light on all you need is now uh, diamond in the mind uh, just an excellent album and that goes to show you that they can produce great stuff later on in their in their career so all you need is now you can check it out now in 2004 Duran Duran decided that they needed to uh, well their last album I think was was pop trash before that and uh, they had only two original members left and eventually, I believe Warren left. I'm not quite sure what happened with Warren. And they finally started talking all the members together and they decided they needed to get back together. The five original members. You got Simon LeBon, Nick Rhodes, John Taylor, Andy Taylor, Roger Taylor. And what they did is they, instead of just shopping around right away for a deal, they started playing concerts. They started doing demos. They came up with tons of songs, finally shopped around for a deal. And they came out with one of my absolutely favorite albums at number seven. And that is Astronaut. And uh, here it is. Super cool album. Reach Up for the Sunrise, I believe, was a huge hit. I don't know if it went top 10 or top 20 in the UK. Super cool hit. Um, great tracks on here. Um, what Happens Tomorrow, the title track, Astronaut, which I think is absolutely excellent. Um, nice, Taste of Summer, Finest Hour, uh, Chains, Point of No Return. Excellent album, bringing back the five members. And I saw this tour when it came to the uh, the Bell Center in Montreal. And this is one of the best concerts I've ever seen. They were on form. All the members were there. The sound was incredible. Absolutely incredible show. I'm so happy I got to see this. So if you want to check it out in 2004, that's Duran Duran Astronaut. So now we're going to enter the era, which I call the golden years. It's kind of hard not to put most of these albums at the top. But here we go. If you remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned something about counting down 15 studio albums. Duran only has 14. The 15th will be released in October. So what have I added on to the list? Well, in 1985, uh, Duran Duran kind of sort of amicably split because John Taylor and uh, uh, John Taylor and Andy Taylor wanted to work with uh, Tony Thompson of the group Chic and uh, Robert Palmer, and they created an album. Now, this album's not on my list. They created an album called The Power Stations, which is a super cool album. I'm not adding this album to my list because I think it's a little bit too different to most um, of the Duran Duran sound. It's not Simon Singh, but they went on to do this. However, the leftover members of Duran Duran, Simon, Nick, and Roger, had nothing to do. So they decided they were going to form their own group, and they called it Arcadia, and it is called... So Red the Rose. Absolutely love this incredible album. First of all, the reason I added this album to my list, well, one reason, is the fact that this album has more original Duran Duran members than Pop Trash and the Dazzleland. There was only two on those. These have three. This sounds more like a Duran Duran album than those two. Um, Election Day was the huge hit from the album, which won, I believe, uh, top 10 in the States to number six. They had Grace Jones singing on it. But this is such an amazing album. They often do a few tracks uh, in concert. Goodbye is Forever, The Flame, Missing, um, Keep Me in the Dark. Excellent album. And there's a song I like to pretend that's actually on the album, but it wasn't. It's called Say the Word. I love that song. It was the um, it was a track for a film that, that they kind of kept separate from the album. But if you buy sort of the deluxe version of the album, it's it's on here. Absolutely love Arcadia. I love the artistic direction of the album, the looks, the visuals, the sound. To me, this is still a Duran Duran album. It's absolutely excellent. I'd love to see them just do this album in concert. It would be super cool. So that's why at number six, we have Arcadia and So Red, The Relics. At number five, we have their debut album, just called Duran Duran. 
And this was the uh, original release with the, uh, the British UK cover. In the US, it got re-released with a different cover, a different logo, and they added the song, Is There Something I Should Know, um, which became part of the album. And uh, this is the album that started it all off with Planet Earth, Girls on Film. Um, again, Is There Something I Should Know? Um, great first slide, Careless Memories, which they often do in concerts. Um, one of my favorite, though, Duran Duran songs is actually not on this album, but it was the B-side. I believe it was the B-side to Planet Earth. And if you've never heard the song, Late Bar, check that song out. I opened up my video with this. They mentioned Room 7609. They mentioned the Late Bar. It's an excellent track. Um, I don't know why it wasn't on their debut album. I guess they figured they, they had too many songs and one had to be cut. And that's it. So at number five, we have Duran Duran. So coming in at number four, I think, is one of their most underrated albums. It is 1988's Big Thing. It's not an album most people talk about. It had the uh, the top, uh, I think it was top five single, went to number four, I Don't Want Your Love. And then it had All She Wants Is, which is, I think, a kind of a top 30 hit. This is an excellent, excellent album. If you uh, were a fan of Duran Duran's hit singles in the early 80s and have never heard this album, you really need to take a listen absolutely beautiful album too late marlene do you believe in shame edge of america uh drive uh, lakeshore driving absolutely fantastic album um it has been remastered and there's been a few different sets and versions of it that have come out super excellent very underrated absolutely love this album called big thing coming in at number four and at number three is the uh, what I would call one of their biggest albums ever. This was the album I remember, all the songs charting, I would listen to the American Top 40 with Casey Kasem, and I remember Union of the Snake going up the charts, and New Moon on Monday, and The Reflex. Um, absolutely incredible album. This is Seven and the Ragged Tiger. You know, this album, well, the album before that made them huge. This made them superstars. The Reflex went to number one. Union, I think Newman on Monday went to number 10. And Union of the Snake was, I think, I believe, top five. Excellent album. Um, this is the album that, that I love. I think this is my favorite imagery of Duran Duran. I love the album and everything they kind of done with this. Super beautiful. Um, Seven and the Ragged Tiger. Shadows Are On Your Side, which wasn't a single... Um, I'm looking for cracks in the pavement, the Seven Stranger, Tiger, Tiger, absolutely incredible album from the uh, the 1980s, Seven and the Ragged Tiger. This is it at number three. Actually, a lot of people, this is their favorite album. I know my best friend, um, Andrew, who I grew up with, is one of the biggest Duran Duran fans. Actually, he's a bigger Duran Duran fan than I am. I can't claim to be the biggest Duran Duran fan, but I know Andrew, this is his favorite album, well-deserved. There it is. And for number two is the album. I think, I'm not sure what my first Duran Duran album was that I bought. When I was growing up, like I said, my best friend Andrew was the big Duran fan. I was the Culture Club fan. He would buy all the Duran Duran albums and kind of tape them for me. The first album might have been Arena. However, the first studio album I ever bought of theirs is this album. And to this day, it is absolutely incredible. I still love it. And that is the album Notorious. At this point, Duran Duran only consisted of John Taylor, Nick Rhodes, and Simon LeBon. And they teamed up with Nile Rodgers, one of my favorite record producers, and produced an absolutely incredible album. Notorious was a huge hit, went all the way up to number two. Unfortunately, the next singles didn't do very well. Skin Trade is excellent song and one of my favorite songs is one of their biggest flops and that is meet el presidente love this album i have to admit i prefer the remix that they did the 12 inch single and the 7 inch single the remix to the album version this song i don't even think charted in the top 40 they were very disappointed love this song absolutely incredible put a stripe on the union star in the jack great lyric from simon and uh love the imagery to this as well um, this album, Vertigo, Do the Demolition, um, Winter Marches On, A Matter of Feeling, American Science, um, Proposition, great, absolutely incredible album at number two. Um, still love it all these years later. This was released, I believe, in 1986. It's Durant and Notorious. Well, there's no surprise what the number one album is going to be. 
Um, it's really hard not to put this album at number one. I think this is an absolute opus album, not just for Duran Duran, but I think for any group, for anybody. This is the ultimate album, not just from the 1980s. I think it's one of the best pop albums ever put out, ever produced. I don't care what anybody says. And that is the album Rio from start to finish. Nine songs on here. Um, Rio is one of my all-time favorite songs. Hungry Like the Wolf is off of here. Save a Prayer, The Chauffeur, which is an absolutely incredible uh, Duran Duran album track. Hold Back the Rain. Actually, I think Hold Back the Rain is probably my favorite Duran Duran uh, song. Um, New Religion, I don't know why that was never a single. It just, you can't beat everything on here. Lonely in Your Nightmare, My Own Way, Last Chance on the Stairway. This album is absolutely incredible. If you are only going to listen to one Duran Duran album to see what they were about, this was it. It was their sophomore album, the second album they released. It is the album that North America took notice with Hungry Like the Wolf. An absolutely incredible, um, I don't know what to say. It's pretty hard not to put this at the top of the list. So this is it, real. So thank you Duran Duran for sticking around, for putting out all this incredible music. You've been together for years. Absolutely love this, and I can't wait to hear the new album. Let me know, what is your favorite Duran Duran album? What's your list? Write them down. What is your top 14, top 15? Top 5. What are your favorite Duran Duran songs? Let me know if you agree with me. If you don't, put them in the comments. I love to hear from you. And if you like my videos, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. Love to get up to at least a 1,000 subscribers. I'm getting close to about 200. So this is cool. So thank you so much. Thank you, Simon, Nick, John, Roger, Andy, all of you. Thank you. Um, I hope to see you this year in concerts. I hope once COVID is completely over that we can get back and see shows. So this is it for now. Love hearing from you and speak to you soon. Ciao.